Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. Well, we're talking about the eight pillars of perfect health, a lot of peace. Prather, perfect health. <laughs> yeah, did you do that? Pillars of perfect health. <laughs> did you do that on purpose? Uh, I did not. <laughs> Sounds like it, though. I know. I should have thought about that. Um, so we've been doing this series. We're on pillar number four, which we're going to talk about water. Yeah. But let's, um, you know, before we do the quick review, I was just thinking about our our week at the office. Has been a, a real encouraging week hasn't it? Uh, Very energetic. There's a tremendous amount of uh, energy, a lot of patients coming in. Uh, We're seeing uh, a lot of people getting well and uh, having a great time. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, really enjoy it. I enjoy what I do. That's that's a very nice thing. We have a nurse practitioner that works for us now and we're, you know, integrated and, um, you know, she's come uh, from a hospital setting Mm -hmm. and um, just... She's so excited to be part of a practice where people are getting well and are encouraged. And um, yeah, it's you know. it's a it's again a different model. So it's a learning curve for her. And one of the big things is that you're talking about going from someone who has a disease model into a uh, into a, uh, a structure a structure function, function model, mm-hmm. uh, a, a health model, where we're trying to get people healthy and just even how we read the blood work. How we approach different types of problems is is so different. So uh, she's enjoying it. She's saying that she's learning a tremendous amount. Uh, but it is definitely a paradigm shift. Yeah. And so it, it, it's, a, it's a very interesting process to see and understanding exactly what we do and how we work that out. And seeing her, you know, discover that is is really a lot of fun and adds a lot of energy to the office. Well, you talk about the FDA has divided healthcare into two two areas. different uh, two different divisions of healthcare, and, and the one that we basically know of as the medical model is a disease model, and that's where you use uh, uh, the pharmaceutical surgery, those types of things, to actually achieve uh, a correction of the symptoms. Uh, diseases are a classification of a group of symptoms, and then they classify it as a disease. Uh, whereas what we do with a structure function is we actually bring the body into greater homeostasis. Mm-hmm. Homeostasis is the balance of the body. We do that structurally. We do that functionally through the physiology. And as we do that, uh, it brings it into homeostasis, which is a balance. And that homeostasis, when it's achieved, is considered the definition of health. It, it makes total sense. It, it does, and mm-hmm. and as you get into it and understand it, it it starts to really make sense, and and people enjoy it, especially the practitioners. Right, right. Oh, we like it up there at the front office too. We get yes. to hear a lot of, a lot of uh, good and positive things. Well, these these eight pillars you came up with. Um, just with the years of experience and practice. Yeah, yeah. And it's something Everything you use to, in your practice. Oh, I use every day on looking at a patient. So first thing that I always want to do is I want to make that, sure that the uh, energy flow of the body, that's what can be changed the quickest and have a very dramatic effect on the, on the person. So first thing that we're always looking at is making sure that their energetic uh, flow, and we have five different areas of that, we have the nervous system, we have the cerebral spinal fluid, we have lymphatic, we have circulatory, we have the electromagnetic energies. And as we can get those opened up, we see some dramatic changes on people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the next one is the oxygenation. Uh, obviously, uh, if people aren't oxygenated, then they've got some problems. Right. But if <laughs> you people, need oxygen. If people aren't quite oxygenated enough, then you know there are all sorts of different things that start to develop. Uh, cardiovascular disease is a is a big player in that, uh, which would make sense. But also, cancer actually plays a big role along those lines. Uh, cancer cells don't grow in an oxygenated uh, environment. Mm. So, understanding how the whole oxygenation process, and we had a whole seg- uh, radio show on that. Uh, yeah, oxygenation is pillar at. number two. Yeah, I want to let our listeners know you can go to praytherwellnesscenter dot com and or the voice of health radio dot com. And um, 
listen to our shows and download them, actually, uh, our past shows on each of these pillars. The first week we did an overview of, of all of them, generally all eight, and then... Um, and then, and then we've hit each specific energy flow actually took two. Yeah. Uh, so last week we talked about pillar number uh, three, xenobiotics. Xenobiotics, and that's strangers to the body. And that's uh, toxins, uh, that's mutagens, that's pathogens. Uh, went into mutagens, it sounds like some sci fi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. Alien gens and all sorts of things. But uh, looking at those and understanding uh, how they affect the body, identifying them. Uh, we also talked about the detoxification uh, with liver, uh, kidneys, lungs. Uh, all those things are very important in making sure that uh, the body is at, at perfect health. And what type of lab tests we do to, to find those things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. We, you talk about each area and what you're looking for, how it's evaluated and treated. Sure. And then we're talking about water today, which is actually a tremendous amount involved. I remember the first time that we actually talked about water on the radio show, which we had done uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and you said, well, are we going to have enough to talk about in water? And <laughs> right, afterwards it was water. like, wow, we hardly covered everything. <laughs> uh, water is very involved and extremely important for one's health. Uh, it, it, you know, not just the obvious types of things, but there's a tremendous amount of influence. Mm-hmm. So we're going to get into depth on water, uh, find out uh, all the things that are actually involved in that. And it will kind of awaken your perception of, of the importance of water and and what kind of water you actually drink. Uh, the fifth one is going, uh, is going to be nutrition. We're going to be talking about that next week. Uh, then exercise is number seven. And then uh, we have rest. I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that, there's a lot involved in that. So mm-hmm. that, that's basically the battery of your body. And then something we call the Beatitudes. And you have to have the right uh, attitude to, uh, to actually make it in health. So uh, putting all eight of those together, we can get a real good idea and pretty well covers anything that could go wrong with somebody and uh, certainly covers everything that we need to have an idea on what is important and where we need to start on someone's health and well-being. Well, great. Well, why is water important? That would be my first... um... Why is water important? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one of the things is that we are mainly water. Mm -hmm. Is one of the first thoughts on that. Our bodies. Our bodies. When we are born, we are 70% water. Mm -hmm. Uh, As we go along, that water level actually uh, decreases, but uh, it's actually best to kind of keep your water level at about 60%. That just seems funny. I see like a water level, you know? (laughs) Where does (laughs) it stop at? Chest level? Yeah, you're kind of looking at me a little funny. I don't know. (laughs) What are you talking about? Percentage? Percentage of of your body. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that's a very important aspect. If if, uh, 60% of your body is water, uh, you know, obviously that, that's very important that you actually maintain that. If that starts to drop, uh, there are all sorts of consequences that start to happen to the body uh, that uh, aren't good. And, and, you know, if you start going too low, uh, there can uh, even be death, uh, obviously. Uh, you can actually uh, die from lack of water. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, if you take in too much water, that can be actually a problem. I remember... Um shouldn't say this on a radio, but a radio program was doing a, a thing, and whoever drank the most water. Certainly. And someone died. Yes. Um, doing that um, promotion, which right. seemed like a good thing. Sure. Because yeah. everybody How thinks about happen? water. Well, uh, you can actually overtax the body. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things, if you actually start to drink too much water, the first thing is, is that you actually go a little crazy. Because the water contents uh, raise up enough that the chemical reactions in the brain start to be altered. Wow, wow. So, and then if you keep on doing that, then that actually can shut down the kidneys, which can stop the heart. So, you know, it's just a chain reaction on that. So, mm-hmm. you, it's just like everything. You know, one of the things that we preach in here is that there is something called homeostasis. 
there is a right amount of everything. And anything taken in too large amounts can actually be a toxin to the body. Mm-hmm. So you can take in too much, uh, too much water or too little water. Neither is good. There is a perfect amount that you should be taking, and that's one of the things that we plan on talking about today. Great. Well, um, let's talk about dehydration. Well, if you actually uh, take in too little water, then you become dehydrated. What are some of the things that actually occur on that? Uh, First off, it's very hard on your kidneys. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we always measure in our lab tests is how are the kidneys functioning? And we have something called a glomerular filtration rate, which is a, a measurement of uh, a couple of different blood tests that's mathematically figured out and how well the body is actually filtering. One of the things, if you're constantly dehydrated, that actually starts to wear on the kidneys, and the kidneys actually start to fail if you're not taking in enough water. So dehydration is something that people actually uh, have a lot of trouble with. Mm-hmm. And it has I know a lot I of have constant. to watch that. You have to watch I, I that. I can start the day. Um, is it true? I've heard this. If you wake up thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Yeah. Yes. There is actually a. Not to get too technical, but there's a whole endocrine system that's involved. It's supposed to be your pituitary. I won't go into details, mm-hmm. but uh, it tells you whether there's a feedback loop, and it actually comes from the kidneys. If you don't have enough water. That tells you you're thirsty. Mm. Okay, when we come back, um, we'll talk further on that dehydration because I know that's very important. And then how water affects colon and, and kidney health. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. What conditions can be helped with acupuncture? The World Health Organization has actually done some uh, definite research. Also, the National Institute of Health has done quite a bit of research on acupuncture with quite a bit of, uh, of very strong evidence on what it works for and what it doesn't. Uh, if we take the digestive area, uh, abdominal pain. I have a lot of people with severe abdominal pain. We can put the needles in. Oftentimes, there's immediate results. Uh, constipation or diarrhea. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can get some changes along those lines. Uh, the uh, the reflux uh, has some very, very good results on that. Uh, emotionally, I have a lot of people coming in for anxiety or depression. Mm. Uh, insomnia. Uh, I have had patients who were, uh, who even after the first treatment uh, that night, they actually were able to sleep. Uh, one gal said, I haven't slept in a uh, couple of days, you know. Put the needles in, she fell asleep on the table, and she said, wow. Infertility is a very common type of thing with a lot mm-hmm. of research on. We have a lot of people coming in. For very that. high success rate mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. But there are very definite points that ha- affect fertility mm-hmm. that are very important to know. It's just not that you're going into an acupuncturist. He's randomly putting some needles in. You have to know where those points are, how they're affected, be able to evaluate them, see which ones are off, and, and how you can actually uh, make an effect on the on the body to actually increase the fertility rate. Have you had success with um, getting infertility? Women pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the best way to put it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, very definitely. We have a very high success rate with. Uh, 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 women with infertility. Uh, we have several proud moms who are also coming in for uh, after the birth mm-hmm. uh, just to help to relax because it helped them so much, one, to get pregnant. Uh, during the pregnancy, uh, you know, help to control the pain, nausea, all those types of things. And then afterwards, uh, the, it's a very trying type of time and, and find that the acupuncture is very helpful at that time. But a very, very good success rate. Mm. Uh, I'm probably saying it's almost 80%. Wow. Which is really, really Mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're very proud of that and uh, glad to help women in in that struggle. Find out if acupuncture is right for you. 
schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. We are continuing our series on the eight pillars of perfect health. We're on pillar number four, water. Believe it or not, there's a lot to talk about when we talk about water. water. (laughs) We're going to talk about what kind of water to drink because there's a lot of choices out there. You know, should you drink bottled water? What about tap water? Um, A lot of questions but we were talking before we went to break on dehydration. And, um, you know, is dehydration a big thing you see with, with your patients? Yes. Uh, the vast majority of people actually show up uh, with uh, dehydration, uh, certainly more than uh, those who are drinking too much water, which has occurred. But the vast majority are definitely having trouble uh, keeping up with the amount of water that they actually need. And that does show up with uh, kidney problems. Uh, we start to see a degeneration of the kidneys. Uh, a lot of people uh, sit there and they, they go, you know, what do you mean my kidneys aren't functioning up to par? Mm-hmm. And you can actually measure uh, a biological age. Uh, there's a way of actually looking at the, um, the age of someone and uh, how well their kidneys are actually functioning is one of those indicators. Mm-hmm. So if you are constantly dehydrated, that's one of the things that will wear out your kidneys and age you and cause all sorts of different types of health problems. So that's a very important aspect of that. And one of the things is I've actually had patients came in who were in out in the heat, overworking, and uh, actually damaged their kidneys. Right. You know, mm-hmm. we had to send them into the hospital uh, because uh, there's actually some damage that occurred on their kidneys. So uh, it, it's something to be taken seriously, something that you need to watch out for and make sure that you keep hydrated. Now, that also affects your colon health. If you don't have enough water in your colon, if you're not taking in enough, you're not going to get the, the normal type of digestion that occurs. Uh, you're going to actually get constipated. Think about, yeah, it's not moving things along. And you're not going to move <laughs> things along as you should. Mm-hmm. So if you're not drinking the water as, as, uh, you know, on a regular basis, then the colon actually will become uh, dehydrated. Uh, there is a reabsorption of water into the, uh, the body, and it's just not going to allow that much water to leave mm-hmm. uh, if you are in a dehydrated state. Uh, the uh, health of your skin uh, has a big effect. Uh, the health of uh, your, uh, how your brain works. Uh, water affects everything, and if you become dehydrated, there's actually an imbalance that occurs in the cells. One of the things is that you're supposed to have about 50% of your water intracellular and 50% of your water extracellular. And don't we have something that tests that? We do. We have something called the body composition analysis, and that actually tests the percentage of water that you are actually having. Uh, it's, it's, we find quite a few people that are actually measuring at about 40%. Uh, where they should be at 60%. Okay. And that person is chronically dehydrated. Uh, they usually have uh, high blood pressure. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the things that we find is that people that have been dehydrated over a long period of time actually will develop high blood pressure as one of the common types of things that will occur. Because if you've been getting, dehydrated. If you've been dehydrated mm. over a long period of time. What's a long period of time? Oh, yeah, that's a very good question. We're not mm-hmm. actually quite sure. But, you know, usually people are talking about 10 years, uh, 5 years, mm-hmm. and they start to damage uh, just the basic mechanisms of how their body's working. And th- at that point, you start to get a shift between the intracellular, extracellular water, the percentage of water that you actually uh, start to carry around is less. And y- y- you need water to actually... Uh, do the basic chemical reactions of your system. That's a very important aspect of that. 
the the water has to be balanced for the cellular cells to actually work to be able to absorb the nutrients. You have to have water in your digestive system to actually make that work right. So everything starts to fall apart if you're not taking enough water in. And that's yeah. something that we measure very uh, very closely at the Prather Wellness Center. One, we can actually see on something called specific gravity on your urine. Uh, and that tells you exactly where you are at this point. But the body composition analysis really is a very, very excellent way of finding out what has been the long-term uh, you know, abuse of your body with, with your water levels. And that's something we call the body comp analysis or bioimpedance analysis that every patient that comes in gets done. One of the first things that I do, because mm-hmm. that does play a big role, and it's very consistently the people with high blood pressure uh, are usually the people that have an imbalance going on in their water and they've been dehydrated for a long period of time. Of course, one thing that's done medically then is that, uh, you, you know, with that imbalance, uh, you're, you're given a, a diuretic, which can even throw off the water balance even more. Mm. That might be necessary, but there are ways to actually work with that. And if you can actually, you know, understand ex- how to get the water back into the system, one of the things is that we have uh, certain types of herbal formulations. We have different types of uh, homeopathic types of programs that actually naturally get the body back into balance that will actually bring it back uh, into balance so that you don't need, don't have the hyper- hypertension anymore. Hmm. And that's one of the big things that we look at is what is actually going on in the fluids. And that has a huge effect on that uh, hypertension, which high blood pressure is a, a major problem that people are dealing with. And we always have to look at the and water to actually link, understand that. Yeah, the dehydration with the with the high blood, blood pressure. pressure, right? Mm. So it, it's a very interesting type of thing. Oh, and also, if you want to keep your skin looking young, mm-hmm. uh, you have to take in enough water. So there's actually a lot of beauty types of aspects of it. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk later on too about uh, what kind of water and. Um, you know, how much of the water. But you had mentioned something about a specific gravity. I, what, what, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> that it, well, one of, the that. Things, one of the things that, uh, you, you know, our, our daughter was in soccer. Mm-hmm. And the coach was saying, you know, that you need to watch out because if you have uh, smelly urine and it gets real yellow, mm-hmm. you're not drinking enough water. Mm. And that's a nice, good way to actually, you know, figure out how things are going. So smelly urine. Smelly urine. And, and if you get yellow urine. Then what does that tell you? You're not, not getting uh, you're not getting enough water. Your specific gravity, you, if, if, if we measure urine, or you... you're actually dehydrated. You're not okay. getting enough fluid. There, it should be pretty clear. Uh, it should be a low specific gravity. You can go too low if you drink too much water. But uh, we always measure the urine just to see how that's that's going. So an easy way to, is to, when you pee... Mm-hmm. Uh, urinate. Urinate. <laughs> uh, proper terms there. Uh, go number one. Uh, then, uh, you know, you need to look Potty. at the color. No. <laughs> you need to look at the color. Yeah. And, and that's a very good indicator, especially with the heat out here. Uh, a lot of kids in sports... Uh, you know, oh, yeah. sit there and say, you know, what color is, is your urine? And that's mm-hmm. a quick way to get a good feedback. Mm-hmm. And if you if you have the darker urine, then that's not good. And if it smells. So uh, get enough water in there. You can look at your urine. Uh, we actually measure that specifically as we do a urinalysis. Uh, that's part of our Prather profile. And we get the specific gravity on there. And that's a good measurement of uh, where you are. Are you taking in enough water right now? And does that tell you a lot about the kidneys and different organs? Uh, it does. I mean, you know, it, mm-hmm. it's a it's a one time type of thing. The body composition analysis is a much more broader type of indicator and mm-hmm. gives a much longer type of picture. Also, how the kidneys have been working. Uh, you know, if, is there a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate? Then uh, we figure that that person's probably been stressing out their uh, kidneys over a long period of time. Hmm. Well, let's talk about. And we're going to um, talk about this later. But now I want to talk about the pH of water. Ah, yes. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the pH. We're talking about alkaline or acidic. Sure. In, in the pH of water, water is 60% of your, of your body. So the pH of the water that you actually take in has a huge effect on the chemical reactions. You have to have certain 
pHs for proper chemical reactions to actually take place. And if that's off, if you're taking in water that is not uh, good on the pH and you keep on doing that, that's going to actually shift the chemical reactions and can have a very broad effect on one's health. Uh, there is actually evidence that uh, the pH is a very big determinant on a lot of diseases that actually occur. Mm. There's actually a perfect pH on your gut, on your blood, uh, on your urine. And how is urine. that checked? Uh, you can actually do pH meters on that. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things we do is whenever we do stool kits, we get a pH on that, we get a good indication on the blood, and then we also get uh, uh, urine pHs too. Okay, interesting. So put that together and we can actually find out what's going on in the chemical reactions. So there is a perfect pH for water. All right, and when we come back, we're going to talk about the quantity, how much is enough, how much water we should be drinking. And up, um, we'll be talking about that up next. And also, what kind of water is good to drink? Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. I went to one nutritionist that was uh, just all raw food. She said, first of all, I want you to juice. I said, okay, juice is not a verb. I don't know what you're talking about. She said, no, for the first month, I want you to cleanse your system. So I want you to drink just juice. I didn't do well with that. She sold me a juice the third day I juiced a ham. She called me up, how you doing? I'm juicing. Let me get this Krispy Kreme in here. We'll be good to go. If you're drinking ham juice and your arm goes numb, wait an hour. I'm not a nutritionist, but... That's just how I, I think you should do it. The Prather Plan Weight Loss Program is safe, comprehensive, medically supervised, and designed just for you. Forget the trendy diets and instead start with a roadmap that actually resets your body's metabolism for optimal fat burning and increased energy. The Prather Plan has 6, 10, or 14 week programs with a proven record of success and with guaranteed weight loss. The Prather Plan is an individualized program that is tailored to your needs to create healthy new habits in your life. You'll receive support from a certified health counselor, a nutritionist, and an exercise physiologist for maximum results. Many weight loss programs can include unhealthy loss of muscle or organ weight. We target your ideal body fat percentage so you can lose body fat in a healthy way where the pounds stay off. Contact the Prather Practice today to schedule a consultation and create a healthier you. 317-848-8048 or on the web at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice. Restore Hope. I was feeling so bad. I asked my family doctor just what I had. I said, Doctor, Doctor. I'm Lisa Prather, and you're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where we get to the root cause of your health issue. We are continuing our series on the eight pillars of perfect health. And this week we are talking about. Uh, pillar of perfect health. I just like to say all those pieces. Number four, uh, water. And Dr. Prather, before we went to break, we were talking about the pH of water, and you know that's a, can be a little boring subject as far well, that, as I'm that, concerned. That, that's what you told me. I was getting a little bit boring, and you know I get a little technical and scientific, <laughs> and I get excited about that stuff. Yeah, you get excited. And about and me. you're you're you start yawning. So <laughs> let me try to break this down into a little bit more practical because that's what you're here for to keep me on track. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're talking about pH of water, it's it's actually very important because uh, if you actually go off on the pH of water, uh, you can actually develop a lot of diseases. Um, that is actually a precursor to cancer. Uh, it is a precursor to cardiovascular disease. Uh, it's a it makes you more susceptible to infections. Uh, you can't absorb the vitamins and minerals as you should, and there's just a general breakdown in, in the basic functioning of your body. Water, pure water, should be at a pH of about 7. 
One of the things that we get uh, with a lot of the city water is we actually get a lot of acidic water, and that really throws off the system. So, you know, that is not a good thing. Now, one of the things that's out there is the whole alkalization of water. Mm -hmm. And you can actually, there is, you know, everybody goes into extremes. Uh, I'm very much as a homeostasis individual. Uh, Water should be at seven. Uh, That's where water is at the purest. And uh, that's where it actually functions the best, you know, in our system. Uh, If you actually get too much of an alkalized type of water, uh, one, the body tries to correct that. Uh, It puts out more hydrochloric acid. There's a little bit more stress on the system. But if you have a truly very alkalized type of water, it can actually overcome that. And alkalized water is actually something that can kick off cancer. That's why we talk about distilled water. You know, drinking, if you drink that, we call that cancer water. Mm-hmm. The reason is is because it has a, a very high alkaline pH, which actually can can be one of the things that kicks off cancer. Of course, very acidic. You know, the acidic water isn't good. The water that's really the purest and actually operates the best is a pH of seven. Mm. Do we find that a lot in reverse osmosis water? Would reverse you- osmosis actually gets very close to that, and the reverse osmosis is the closest you know on processing that mm-hmm. we can get to the spring water. Spring water is absolutely the best. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different types of factors that go into water. Of course, we were talking about the pH, and the cleanest water is is a very uh, 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 you know neutral type of a of a water at seven. Uh, the other things that we look at is something called the redox potential. Well, let's go back. Uh, I want to ask on the pH because there's waters coming out that are alkaline. Waters. Alkalized waters, yes. What a, what's your opinion on that? I know distilled, and I, I want to repeat that. Sure. Uh, you think distilled is best used in an iron, right? In an iron. Not, not in drink, our bodies. Do not drink distilled water. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, there was, was a, there, you know, there was a, a push there, I remember, yes. I don't know how many years ago. And the reason that they, they were really promoted the distilled water is it has a low parts per million. Mm-hmm. One of the main... What does that mean? Low yeah. parts per million. <laughs> That's why I've got you here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Low parts per million is how much soluble stuff is in there. You want water to... main thing that water does is it cleanses the body. Mm-hmm. So the less stuff it has in there, the more it can actually do its job. So you don't really need to add to it. Like um, a lot of my tennis buddies, vitamin right. those vitamin waters. Look, it adds vitamin in. Sure. What's what's your opinion on that? Uh, those yeah, you should just take the vitamins directly. The vitamin water you don't want. You really want water to be pure. Mm-hmm. There are different reasons to take in fluids, and we get a lot of fluids in in a lot of different types of ways. One of the things you asked me is how much fluid should we you know water should we be taking in? Well, there's also the whole factor of how much other fluids we're bringing in to our system. Mm-hmm. But cleansing water should be about eight glasses of uh, a day. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a really good, and that should be pure. That should be nothing else with it. The body really handles uh, those fluids differently. Uh, so we need that pure water, not just liquids in other different types of forms, which not goes coffee, into that. Not, not coffee, coffee, not Coke, <laughs> not iced tea. Uh, you know, not not iced tea. It really needs water. And the reason that you're taking in the water is think of it as a cleansing inside. You don't want to take a shower in uh, in mm, in coffee. Good point. You don't want to take... <laughs> and that's how I try to, you know, connect that to people. Yeah. You are actually... Clean, think of the water as a cleansing of the body mm-hmm. internally. In you want it to be at the right uh, at the right amount to mm-hmm. actually accomplish that. So you're taking in the water to, to get some cleansing going, and the water needs to be at a at a cleansing level. Uh, the most most waters uh, city water. Well, I've actually tested our water, and it was at uh, 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 over 500 parts per million, and and really according to the that's our tap water. That's our tap water, and I've actually measured it at 600 parts per million. Where do you want it? Uh, well, you want it below 100. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, according By to the way, we FDA, don't drink our tap water. Right, we FDA guidelines. It. Yeah, it's it's not actually supposed to be really drinkable over five hundred parts per yeah. million. The only thing we do is use it to brush our teeth as right. quickly as possible. <laughs> 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 so you, you know, they if, if people are asking, you know, is tap water really okay? No, well, no, not not the majority. Well, at least. Uh, Several cities, though, uh, they actually have uh, measured out, uh, as I was looking at some of the different cities, uh, 250 parts per million. Uh, there was actually, um, um, San Antonio had 100 parts per million. Mm-hmm. Uh, but not Indianapolis. Not Indianapolis. Or was Carmel, not. Indiana. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where we live. So we were not really doing well. Uh, so you want to keep your the the parts per million low. If you are a uh, 500 to 250, it's kind of a wash. Under 250, uh, you start to get some cleansing. But really, if you can get the parts per million below 100 parts mm-hmm. per million, you've got some real good cleansing going on. Mm-hmm. And uh, m- many of the bottled waters that uh, that I've really liked in the past, there was one called Music Glacier. You remember when oh, we used to get yeah. that? And then Poland. Poland's no, still Poland's around. very good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that, that's about a 10 parts that's per million. A spring. Yeah, so, you've measured that at ten parts. Ten parts per million, and and that's very cleansing, healing water. Mm-hmm. And I've I've actually I've known a few guys that that actually cured themselves with some really serious diseases. Mm-hmm. And that should be a part of what you're actually looking at is uh, how clean the water is. Is your water at the right pH? Uh, there's actually a redox potential that you'll look at. Yeah, let's talk about what's redox potential. Well, the redox... I know you, you uh, know people that have gotten their PhD in water, correct? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm going to try not to bore people. Yeah, but... notice we don't have them on as guests. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, because they, they, I, I even yawn when they lecture. <laughs> but it, it's basically the availability of the body to actually give or take... Uh, uh, electrons and okay. as it has that that actually has a potential to actually cause some free radical da- damage if it's not at the right level and there is a perfect redox level uh, that actually should be measured and that's something that they actually look at uh, also as they are measuring water quality so there is a a, uh, a parts per million that you want to have there is a ph there's a redox potential and then there's also a um, Uh, and energetics to the water that you can actually measure in millivolts. So how does someone measure it? Or (laughs) does it have this information on the bottle? Uh, Well, they usually, one of the things is if they have really good parts per million, they're usually going to put it on there. And one of the things is if you have a good parts per million, you probably have some pretty good measures on the other. Mm-hmm. Except for distilled water. It has a good parts per million, but it doesn't have the good redox or the good pH. Mm-hmm. And no, most bottles actually don't have that, um, you know, all that information on there. But usually if you're talking about a good spring water, and the closest that we can get to the good spring water is reverse osmosis. That is the FDA guidelines when Coca-Cola or any bottling company actually adds water to any type of product that they're actually going to sell. The federal government actually requires them to use reverse osmosis because then they know that the water is actually pretty uh, pretty safe to actually take in and has a pretty good uh, pH and pretty close to what water should be. Mm-hmm. So if you can't get good spring water, then the next best thing is to take a uh, reverse osmosis. But whatever you do, and I repeat that several times, don't drink distilled water because uh, it will make you sick. Mm-hmm. Um, you made me think too. I mean, you talked about quantity. I know at our office we have reverse osmosis in the water, and yes. people bring their um, empty bottles and fill them up, which is fine with us because it's very good water. Yes, there and um, a lot of times you'll find it out in public areas. Um, with oh, the yeah. machines they have, a lot of um, almost all the grocery stores have them that mm-hmm. you can actually fill up the bottles. So that that's a very good way of actually doing it. But you know, as as we're talking about it, yes, I, you know, right now I don't recommend the uh, tap water. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you have a, a very acidic water, then you're going to get a lot more parts per million. 
Okay. When we come back, I'm going to ask brands and get your opinion. Brands of water, um, bottled water. Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Dr. Prather, what can a new patient expect when they come into your office? The first thing is the uh, that's extremely important is the consultation. Mm-hmm. That's really where everything begins. And that consultation is complimentary free. They can come in, and the consultation's with you, mm-hmm. which is nice. Yeah, yeah the consultation is uh, absolutely critical. Metaf- in fact, you can get 90% of your diagnosis just from the consultation. Mm-hmm. Listening to the patient. Listening to the patient, finding out uh, what their concerns are, uh, what uh, needs to be done, mm-hmm. uh, how we can best help them. Uh, having a good understanding of, of the complaints of the patient is absolutely critical mm-hmm. for good care. And, knowing, and the patient knowing that we are actually listening to them. We have very thorough uh, intake forms uh, that mm-hmm. are extremely helpful gives us quite a f- bit of information of what's going on into the system. After the consultation, you have to look at the diagnostics. Okay. Uh, you Do an first have to yeah. understand, you know, where the patient's coming from, uh, have an idea, but then you have to know, you know, what to do, mm-hmm. uh, what the problem is. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a difference on our diagnostics than from the uh, medical diagnostics. So the medical profession, uh, as a disease care-based program, they are looking at uh, disease states and uh, combinations along those lines mm-hmm. to treat the symptoms. Our basis of our care is a understanding of what is the underlying cause, finding out what that is, uh, usually caused by a break from homeostasis. Mm-hmm. And you're going to hear that word if you're listening to our radio program. You're going to know every it time. well. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. homeostasis is the basis of our practice. And homeostasis is the basis of health. And we are a health office. Mm-hmm. That is what a structure function office is. Mm-hmm. So the diagnostics are extremely thorough, probably more thorough than what you would get anywhere else. We look at very extensive blood work. We uh, might do hair analysis, uh, might do some uh, evaluation of the gut because that's so important to one's health. Uh, We uh, do uh, a thorough cardiac evaluation. We do a thorough musculoskeletal exam. Many offices that even are into natural health are are either just dealing with the functional aspect Mm -hmm. or they are just dealing with the structural aspect. We are unique in in that we deal with both, and both of them extremely thoroughly and extremely well. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. We are continuing our series on the eight pillars of perfect health. We're on pillar number four, water. Let's talk, we were going to talk about um, brands of water. Um, Mm -hmm. You say no distilled water, do not drink distilled water, just use it in your irons. Yes, <laughs> it's very good for those types of things, but uh, do not use it uh, actually to drinking because uh, it, it will damage the kidneys. I mean, one of the things that we find on uh, hypertension and kidney damage, uh, 70% of all uh, high blood pressure actually comes from uh, kidney damage. And people are always asking me, well, you know, why are my kidneys damaged? Well, one, you know, people don't drink enough water. Mm-hmm. And then also they drink uh, a lot of the wrong water. 
Mm-hmm. So drinking the correct water will have a big impact on, on how healthy your kidneys are. So what waters, um, well, let's start with the waters you would recommend. This Ice Mountain one that you would recommend. Ice Mountain is actually a very good water. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a purified water, but they do a very nice job on it. Uh, it has uh, almost always a, uh, a, a low parts per million, uh, always under 100, usually it's under 50. And uh, it has a good pH, uh, has a good redox potential, and has a good energetic quality. I know that they do some things on that just to kind of bring that up. Mm-hmm. And uh, they do a very good job, so I feel very comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one that, that we use quite a bit. It's an easy one yes, to get. Yes, we do. Uh, Poland Springs. You talked mm-hmm. about that. That's it's not it's red, you know, readily available as it used to be. Right. It's hard to find. But, uh, yeah. Icelandic is actually a very good one, too. Mm-hmm. I, I like As- Icelandic. I also like Fiji water. Fiji, yeah. Yeah. that's a, Those are all very good waters to... I like how it's bottled. That's pretty cool. I know. It is actually pretty <laughs> cool. And uh, it, it does very well. And one of the things is that all the sports teams... Uh, Always look for a good quality water. And Fiji water is actually the most popular uh, water that sports teams actually use. Mm, interesting. So those are all very good waters. Uh, there are some that aren't as good. Yeah. Now, I see a lot of people drinking Nestle. Yeah. I I tried it. Um, what's your opinion? I, I know I have my opinion just I've, from how I've I I've measured felt. it before, and the pH and the redox potential, I find, is usually off on that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I do I don't feel good with it. It doesn't taste very good to me. I wonder me. where they get it. And it, it's in the process, you know, that they mm-hmm. actually put together. It, it's not as... Too much chocolate in there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but it, it definitely, uh, as you measure it out electronically, it, it's not... The, from the measurements that I've done and from the other people that I've talked to, it's it's not usually a very good water. Mm-hmm. You just so, see it on sale, you right. know, a lot. Oh, and a very popular water is Evian, uh, terrible water. Terrible water. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's not good for you at all. Mm-hmm. So that's also another one that I'm not real fond of. Okay, so you recommend Ice Mountain. Ice Mountain, Fiji. Icelandic is very good. The Fiji water is, is uh, excellent. So those are some, some real good ones. Uh, like I said before, uh, there was uh, a, one that we used to actually import in, uh, Music Glacier. It was the only water that Tom Cruise would drink. Is that from um, Canada? It was actually from Canada, and they got it from a glacier. And that actually brings up a real good point. There is actually an energetic quality also to water, and they find that water that like falls from a waterfall, mm-hmm. that it's actually much cleaner, uh, has a higher energy, and actually a better pH. So a lot of the filtration types of systems that you can use, uh, also aqua filters as the, as the water goes through, there's a very strong purification. So the earth actually has a natural filtration t- uh, for water to actually improve its quality. Mm-hmm. So water that actually moves faster, that uh, running water, you know, actually drinking from running water, People would would say, oh, this is a good place to get water because it's it's running water. It's running fast. Well, we have friends that you know own a small island up way north in Canada. Yes. And they drink from the water, uh, the lake water. Right. It's and so clean. As you actually raise up the energy of the water, as you you know get the pH better, uh, as you get the energetic quality of the water, there's actually a, a filtration poly- uh you know, if you take like even this this fracking, you've mm-hmm. heard about that where they take that and they take the water that's been polluted from the fracking and they put it through some magnetic charges that a lot uh, after they do that, get the energetic level up, then the water actually dissipates most of the toxins out of it. Interesting. So there are a lot of different types of systems out there that uh, are water cleansers that... Uh, different people have brought to me. There's been some uh, very interesting kind of almost like mountain men that have brought them in and shown me <laughs> these these water f- uh, filtration systems and, You've been and what that too does. Much di- dynasty, yeah, the mountain men, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they they those things actually can work. So mm-hmm. the magnetic energy of that. Uh, you know, you're, you're looking for that type of, of quality water. And as you get that, there is a very definite healing property 
on that type of type of water that you can well, actually get. Well, let's talk some about. Out. Wasn't there a study done in Japan about the energy of water? Um, and it's in that movie. What the bleep do we know? Yes, right. Talking yes. about there quantum was, physics. There was a there was a professor out there who did uh, uh, quality research on water, and water actually carries energetic properties. So water can actually be a very strong healer uh, by the energetics that it actually kind of goes through. You know, what is mm-hmm. the system? Where is your water been? And one of the things that's very true is is um, uh, we are really polluting a lot of our water. Mm. You know, uh, mm. we need to be much more careful. We need to not only be taking care of the environment inside of us, but we need to be taking care of the wa- uh, the environment outside. And we need to take that much more seriously because we are damaging ourselves from the toxins that we are actually taking in. I remember flying uh, when I went to Nicaragua one summer, uh, flying over and looking at this lake and thinking it's it, uh, it's not alive. It, you know, when you look at water, sure. Found out later, um, and and they were they're cleaning it up slowly, but it was used for sewage. Right. You know um, what we do, um, and maybe they didn't have a choice, or or I don't know. You know the politics involved in that, but um, it's sad. You know what we're doing to our water. Yes, and, and we really need to protect the water, uh, make sure that we're measuring it. Uh, you know, one, the federal government should be involved in measuring uh, our water levels, you know, mm-hmm. because that's a whole big community type of thing. But we as individuals need to also take responsibility for our own systems. One of the things that, uh, you know, I was just having some patients in today, and they were saying, well, why should, should we do these different tests? Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you know, you have a responsibility to make sure that your internal environment is right. Mm. And if you don't measure it, then you don't know. And, you mm. know, just part of our basic type of a uh, of a check on someone is that body composition analysis. Right. Because that tells me so much about what's going on on the energetics of the body. We have something called a phase angle that has a huge effect on, on one's health, you know, the energies uh, that are measured, just like we measure the energy of the, of the water, that, you know, and that has mm-hmm. a huge effect on how that works. Uh, the energetics of our, of our um, electric, electrical system, uh, something called a phase angle, has a huge effect. But also we really measure out quite a bit of the water. What is the percentage of water that you actually have? You know, you want to keep it at 60% to keep your youth and, and vitality. One of the things that occurs on aging, and one of the big markers on biological aging, is what percentage of water. You don't want to become a prune. <laughs> well, yeah, you start dropping, you get mm-hmm. below 50%, and uh, you can't help but age. Mm-hmm. You want to keep it at that 60%. Mm-hmm. You start, and then, you know, as people get older, I was uh, measuring someone, they were almost at 40%. Well, you know, you aren't going to function. You're, the person looked older. Mm-hmm. You know, there was there was an no aging energy. process. Yeah, the energy's gone. Uh, get that person back up to about a 60% and you'll see a big change. And not changing anything else, but changing the percentage of water in that individual and you will see a dramatic change. So, you know, looking at that, following that, looking at uh, what percentage is, uh, uh, is there a balance between the um, uh, intracellular and extracellular water that should be 50-50. The body is constantly looking for homeostasis and if that's off then there's some damage that's occurring and if you actually balance out and get some good water in there uh, you can actually see that uh, bounce back out again you see that 50 and, and 50 this, starting to come about all this information is in a five to ten minute test the bio impedance <laughs> analysis correct uh, and it there's a printout of sure um checking all that the um the water right percentage um, absolutely and you review that with the patient each patient that comes in yeah very accurate and all you have to do is just get a little uh it, they tape something on your on your wrist and on your ankle and uh they fire it away and you got your measurement so it, it doesn't really i know we had anything. a husband and wife come in uh lately her phase angle was uh, a 10 which is uh phenomenal Really, Phenomenal. yeah, health. Um, and her husband's was five, 
Yeah. Which is is not good. It's not good at all. <laughs> How'd they take that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? They knew it. They knew it. Yeah. She has more energy than you can shake a stick at. And, they're in their 80s. Right. Or, yeah. And she says, he's not well and I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, you are right. <laughs> and I said, yes. I mean, you know, this shows up. And she says, see, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, she also, um, even though that showed that she was very healthy, did some wellness checks. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. And she was very interested. I mean, that's that was what she says that she's all about is uh, wellness. And she's been doing herbals and, and mm-hmm. uh, nutritional types of stuff. And that's where she's gone. She says, you know, I, I don't have time for pharmaceuticals. I'm not going to go that route. Yeah. Well, let's, you, know? you have 30 seconds, Dr. Prather, just to kind of conclude this um, pillar number four, water. I want to make sure you have enough time to... Sure. Uh, it, it's something that's not taken very seriously and, and people aren't really educated, but I see a dramatic influence of water on someone's health. So having a good idea of exactly what that is and having that measured out uh, through urine tests, blood tests, and through the body composition analysis is something that everybody should do at least once a year, mm-hmm. minimum, to find out what how they are doing with their hydration. Okay, great. Well, we're out of time. Thank you, Dr. Prather. The Prather Practice is located at 8902 North Meridian Street on the north side of Indianapolis, just south of the I-465 loop. If we can help you to achieve better health, we'd love to hear from you. Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com for The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather.